हेलो माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज़ द सेकंड लेक्चर ऑफ फोटो सिंथेसिस व्हिच इज़ द चैप्टर नंबर फोर इन योर बुक इन माय प्रीवियस लेक्चर आई हैव टोल्ड अबाउट द फैक्टर्स अफेक्टिंग द रेट ऑफ फोटो सिंथेसिस आई हैव टोल्ड अबाउट द क्लोरोफिल अबाउट द क्लोरोप्लास्ट एंड द स्टोमैटा एंड इट्स ओपनिंग एंड अबाउट द डिफरेंट बेसिक प्रोसेस ऑफ फोटो सिंथेसिस नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू टेल अबाउट द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ फोटो सिंथेसिस वाई फोटो सिंथेसिस इज इम्पॉर्टेंट photosynthesis is called as the life supporting process why it is a life supporting process because it supports the life of every living organism in present on the earth as photosynthesis is present photosynthesis during photosynthesis what happen the exchange of the gases takes place the exchange of the gases that is carbon dioxide and oxygen and oxygen is produced and the oxygen which is removed out of the plant is released out of the plant is utilized by other living organisms for respiration we all require uh, oxygen for respiration that is why photosynthesis is a important process after this the during photosynthesis the food which is found that is the glucose so glucose is utilized as a source of energy for every living organism so the f- living the photosynthesis is a f- food provides food for all the living organisms that is why it is called as the life supporting process and it is a important process for the present on the living environment or in the living world after this the food which is formed during photosynthesis that is the glucose what is the importance of glucose why only glucose is formed not any other carbohydrate that is first glucose is a source of energy glucose is the instant source of energy glucose can not be uh, uh, replaced by any other carbohydrate because glucose is an instant source glucose immediately is formed inside the plant cell it moves inside the cell do not need to get digested it do not need to get stored it immediately moves inside the plant cell and there it is utilized by the plant cell for and as the energy glucose can be easily converted into energy by the respiration next whatsoever glucose is remaining inside the plant it gets stored in the form of the starch easily glucose can be stored in the form of starch easily that is why glucose is formed after this whatsoever protein or amino acid or nitrogenous compounds are there present in the plant whatsoever fat is there present in the plant that also can be easily converted into glucose so glucose and can be stored inside the plant glucose absorbed by the nitrogenous com- compound uh, can be easily converted into glucose as the source of the food you must have uh, heard about the uh, the insectivorous plant insectivorous plant eat uh, the uh, insects right insects insects provide nitrogen to them so the, the nitrogen which is provided by the insect to the insectivorous plant get converted into glucose so the nitrogenous compound the fat easily can be converted into glucose which can be easily utilized by the cell for the formation of energy after this the glucose when get dissolved in the water can be easily translocated from one part to another part it can easily move from one another leaf to other part of the plant and can be easily absorbed by the cell for the uh, respiration through xylem and through phloem the glucose can be easily translocated from one part of the plant to other part of the plant that is why glucose is formed inside the cell now we are coming on to the activities related to the photosynthesis given in your book the activity number 1 which is given in your book that is to demonstrate that starch is formed during the photosynthesis how we are going to demonstrate this activity what we are going to do for this activity the things which are required that is two potted plant a beaker a test tube water burner a dropper alcohol iodine solution and a glass plate so what it is going to be done in the activity in this activity two plants have been taken plant number 1 that is labeled as a plant number 2 will be labeled as b and both the plants will be kept in a dark room for 48 hours both the plants will be kept in a dark room for 48 hours so after keeping the plant in a dark room what happens the starch which is present of the in the leaves is utilized by the plant and the leaf become starch free as the leaf become starch free 
so one of the plant that was labeled as a is remained kept in a dark room and the other plant which is labeled as b is now kept in sunlight for at least four to five hours after this the leaves of both the plant has been plucked that is from a and from b and the leaves are boiled in the water after boiling the leaf in the water both the leaves are kept in a test tube in which ethyl alcohol has been taken the ethyl alcohol which is kept in a test tube and the test tube is again boiled again boiled the test tube inside kept inside the water and is boiled what now what happens due to it the chlorophyll is destroyed and the leaf of the leaves the chlorophyll is destroyed which makes the leaf colorless that is the green color of the leaf disappears and the leaf become white why the leaf is boiled in the ethyl alcohol to destroy the chlorophyll of the leaf as the chlorophyll destroys the leaf become colorless and white in color as the leaf become white in color now they have been given the iodine test when few drops of the iodine is put on the leaf a which was kept in a dark room which was remained kept in a dark room that was leaf a it remained colorless now when iodine test is done on the leaf b which was kept in the sunlight for some time that becomes blue black in color which shows that the during photosynthesis the food which is formed that is starch and the conclusion is the food which is formed that is starch now activity number second three which is given in your book this is to demonstrate that during photosynthesis oxygen is evolved this activity is done by using the hydrilla plant in this activity what is the what material has been taken that is the beaker funnel test tube hydrilla plant and the water hydrilla is an aquatic plant which is submerged aquatic plant and found inside the water during this activity what is done hydrilla plant kept inside the funnel is put inside a beaker which is filled with the water and the beaker the this funnel is covered by a test tube and this complete apparatus is kept in a sunlight for some hours that is approximately up to 4 to 5 hours after 4 to 5 hours what happen the hydrilla plant is going to photosynthesize and as the hydrilla plant is going to photosynthesize some bubbles appear in the test tube and these bubble get accumulated on the top of the test tube above the water and when this is the gas which is accumulated when this gas the test tube is taken out and the gas which is present inside the test tube is tested by putting the splinter splinter is a burning a uh, matchstick or a burning candle with a low flame when the splinter is burst is put next to the mouth of the test tube then what is going to happen the splinter will burst into flame matlab it is going to uh, glow in a with a higher flame splinter will get burst into flame this proves that during photosynthesis the gas which is formed that is oxygen now we are coming on to the next activity given in your book the next activity which is given in your book that is activity to show that chlorophyll is necessary for photosynthesis chlorophyll is necessary for this activity what it is done the material which is required that is potted plant with variegated leaves variegated leaves what are the variegated leaves variegated leaves are those leaves which are which have some part colorless or white in color and some part green in color those are variegated leaves you must have seen the leaves of these plant in money plant in some of the money plant also variegated leaves are there some of the leaves are uh, half of the leaf is uh, colorless or white in color and half of the leaf is color, uh, green in color those are variegated leaves so for this experiment variegated leaf has been taken a burner a test tube a dropper petri dish water paper sketch pen alcohol and iodine solution so in this experiment what is done in this experiment what it is done that is 
in a potted plant with a variegated leaf has been kept in sunlight for few hours and the after few hours the leaf of that plant is taken and boiled in the water and again that particular leaf has been kept in the alcohol to destroy the chlorophyll of that particular leaf after this this leaf has been mugged and this leaf has been passed into the iodine solution as the leaf has been passed into the iodine solution the green portion of the leaf get converted into blue black color and the white portion of the leaf which was the center portion do not get converted into blue black color it remain white it shows that the part which was green in color which consisted of chlorophyll that which consisted of chlorophyll that uh, uh, sh- Uh, in that place photosynthesis occurs and the part of the leaf which was non green in color which was whitish in color that remained white in color it means their photosynthesis do not take place so this proves that chlorophyll is essential for photosynthesis without chlorophyll as a photosynthesis will not take place now we are coming on to the next activity that is activity number 5 when in your book this activity is to show that sunlight is necessary for photosynthesis sunlight is necessary for photosynthesis for this what it is done a leaf has been taken a plant has been kept in a dark room approximately up to 48 hours what how uh, why the plant is kept in a dark room for 48 hours to make the leaf destarched then the plant become destarched now what it is done will be done the leaf one leaf of that particular plant is covered by a black strip and half of the leaf is covered with the black strip and half of the leaf is remained open now this plant will be kept in sunlight for 4 to 5 hours as the leaf will be kept in sunlight for 4 to 5 hours then photosynthesis will take place in that now that the leaf which was covered is plugged from that plant and will be boiled in water and will be kept in ethyl alcohol to destroy the chlorophyll of it and the leaf will become colorless as the leaf will become colorless again it will be passed on in the iodine solution the part of the leaf which was covered by the black paper remain colorless while the part of the leaf which was opened have will become blue black in color it proves that the part of the leaf which was covered with the black paper did not received any sunlight as the part of the uh, leaf, leaf which was covered did not receive any sunlight so it will be it it shows that there no photosynthesis occurs as there was no sunlight and the part of the leaf which was opened which was not covered it received the sunlight and it proves that sunlight is required for photosynthesis and without sunlight photos photosynthesis will not occur now this act the next activity that is activity number 6 given in your book this activity is to demonstrate that carbon dioxide is necessary for photosynthesis in this activity what is done the things which has been taken that is the first two potted plants of the same size next glass plate bell jar watch glass kuh solution grease and iodine solution in this activity what is done two setups have been made in one setup the plant is placed with kuh kuh is potassium hydroxide this plant is kept with kuh and covered with the bell jar and the bottom of the plant is greased second apparatus plant is kept inside a bell jar and the bottom is greased greased but there is no kuh why the bottom of the plant this apparatus is greased to assure that no water or the gases should be released out yeah. of this apparatus or should move inside this apparatus so what happens during this during this uh, process the these two apparatus is kept in the sunlight for in the dark room for 2 to 3 days 
as the plant will be kept in dark room for two to three days, this will make the plant de-starched. And after this, this de-starched plant will be kept in sunlight for two hours. After this, when the sunlight, when the plant will receive the sunlight, again the photosynthesis will start. And photosynthesis will start. But in the uh, setup A, as there was KOH, so when the plant was kept in a dark room, the photo, no photosynthesis was taking place. There, the plant has become de-starched, and the uh, carbon dioxide has been present inside the plant. With the carbon dioxide which has been present inside the plant, it will be absorbed by the KOH. After this, this will be absorbed by the KOH, and when the apparatus is uh, kept in the sunlight no photosynthesis will take place inside the plant a but while in the second one that is the b food carbon dioxide is present inside the bell jar but there is no way which so in the presence of carbon dioxide the photosynthesis will take place by the will be done by the setup b so when the these two plants have been taken for the iodine test the leaves of the plant a did not show any color change by the iodine solution while the leaves of the plant B will show the change by the iodine solution. This proves as the K which was present inside the bell jar, it has absorbed all the carbon dioxide, so no photosynthesis has been taken place inside the apparatus A. While in the apparatus B, there was no K which, so photosynthesis has been taken place and the leaves will show the color change. So this proves that carbon dioxide is plays an important role in the photosynthesis. Without carbon dioxide, no photosynthesis will occur. So this is the end of your topic. Now we are coming on to the checkpoint given in your book, which is the true and false. Checkpoint number one. Photosynthesis provides carbon dioxide for all living organisms. This is false. It provides oxygen. Next, the presence of starch is tested with the help of iodine solution. This is true. Next, stomata remain open at night. This is false. They become closed at night. Next, starch synthesized in the leaf is transported to different parts of the plant. This is false. This is glucose. Glucose, which is in the size of the leaf, is transported to different part of the plant. Next, plants are called autotrophs. This is true because they are able to prepare their own food. That is why they are called as the autotrophs. Now, the fill in the blanks given in your book. The first one, chlorophyll traps energy from, that is, sun light next dark nutrition is found in non-green plant in non-green plant there is no chlorophyll so there will be no photosynthesis so the nutrition which will be found that is heterotrophic nutrition next the occurrence of photosynthesis can be confirmed by testing the presence of starch. It means if the starch is there in the leaf, then photosynthesis has taken place. Next, the starch turns color of iodine from purple to bluish black. Now, when roots a green plant prepare their own food they are called as autotrophs next microscopic opening under the surface of the leaf that is tomato next hydrolysis of water into H plus and OH minus with the use of solar energy is called as photolysis of water next the end product of photosynthesis the end product of photosynthesis is glucose and oxygen next presence of starch in the leaf is tested using iodine solution 
this is ideal solution is the answer of this particular given word now the odd one out the first one the odd one out is protein because protein is not a carbohydrate and others are the type of carbohydrate next is the starch because starch is not a chemical it is a carbohydrate formed inside the plant while others are used to test the starch or these are the chemical used to test the starch or to absorb carbon dioxide next chlorophyll stomata sulfur carbon dioxide it is the sulfur because sulfur is not utilized during the photosynthesis it is of no use during the photosynthesis next leaves chloroplast chlorophyll and roots the answer will be roots because roots are not required in the photosynthesis while others are required in photosynthesis so this is the end of the topic today i suppose everything is clear to everyone if any query come to it on my portal and you'll be given assignment regarding to it thank you